Hello, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Today's topic is epistaxis and classification and management of epistaxis. And today I am Dr. Parvez Ahmed Rishi who has to present this topic in front of you. Uh, please stay, give your full attention. And uh, now let us start. We have, first of all, we have to talk about acknowledgement. We are highly thankful to Dr. Amir, Dr. Salman, Dr. Junaid, and Jessel Mary June. Now we have the bleeding epistaxis. Now the bleeding is uh, uh, from bleeding from inside the nose is called epistaxis, often present as an emergency. Uh, epistaxis is a sign and not a disease. Okay. It is not a disease. Classification of epistaxis, anterior epistaxis, when blood flows out from the front of a nose with the patient in the sitting position. And the posterior epistaxis is mainly the blood flows into the throat a uh, patient may swallow it and later have a coffee colored vomitus. This may erroneously be diagnosed as hematemesis and the differences between the two types of epistaxis are, now we are going to discuss about the uh, differences between the two. So we have anterior epistaxis and posterior epistaxis. Now the differences between the anterior and the posterior epistaxis, we have taken this from uh, Jessil Mary, uh, Mary's presentation, this part of the presentation, we give full credit to them. Anterior epistaxis is incidence is more common and posterior epistaxis incidence is less common. Sight, most uh, from the littlest area, anterior part of the lateral wall, most from the posterior part of the nasal cavity, often difficult to localize the bleeding point. Age is mostly occurs in children or young adult and after 40 years of age. Mostly uh, the cause is trauma so, uh, in the posterior epistaxis. It is the, uh, usually the cause is spontaneous, spontaneous often due to hypertension and arterial bleed. So bleeding is usually mild and can be easily controlled by local pressure and bleeding is usually profuse and requires mainly posterior nasal packing. Cross section of the nasal cavity and its vascular uh, source, anterior ethmoid arteries. These are the anterior ethmoid arteries. So see, and here these are the Kesselbach's plexus network of the arteries in the in front of nasal cavity. This is the in front of the nasal cavity. This is the uh, nose. So this is the bleeding from the nostril. Bleeding. This is the anterior end. This is bleeding from the nostril. This is hard palate roof of mouth. This is the hard palate. It forms the roof of mouth, and here we have the Kesselbach's plexus. Now the posterior ethmoid, posterior ethmoidal arteries. This is the network of arteries in the back of the nasal cavity and bleeding down uh, the throat. This is bleeding down the throat, so it is it goes posteriorly. These are again the posterior ethmoidal arteries. These are the anterior ethmoidal arteries which, which bleed here. The what bleed is the posterior ethmoidal arteries. Okay. What, what management we do in any case of the epistaxis is important to know mode of onset, spontaneous or fingernail trauma, duration and frequency of bleeding, amount of blood loss, side of nose from where bleeding is occurring, whether bleeding is anterior or posterior, any known bleeding tendency in the patient or family. Is there any known bleeding tendency? So history of known medical ailment, if there is hypertension, leukemia, mitral valve disease, cirrhosis, nephritis, history of drug intake, analgesic and anticoagulant. Now first aid, most cases bleeding from little area easily controlled by pinching the nose with thumb and index finger and about five minute compression of the vessels of the little area. In trotters method patients is made to sit leaning a little forward over a basin to spit any blood and breathe quietly from the mouth. Cold compress should be applied and used to the to cause reflex vasoconstriction. Okay. 
anterior nasal packing it is anterior active anterior epistaxis is nose is cleared of bloody clots by suction attempt made to localize the bleeding site minor effects are accessible site cauterization may be done profuse bleeding and the site div site difficult to localize anterior nasal pack should be done so in anterior nasal packing the active anterior epistaxis we have minor bleeds and we may do cauterization and we may do anterior nasal packing Procedure is use a uh, ribbon gauze soaked with liquid paraffin about one meter gauze and 2.5 centimeter wide in adult and 12 mm in the children is required for each nasal cavity. Horizontal packing we have step one few centimeters of gauze are folded upon itself and inserted along the floor. Step two whole nasal cavity packed lightly by laying the gauze from floor to roof and from before backwards from before to backwards and packing in vertical layers we have step one few centimeters of gauze are folded upon itself and inserted along the floor packing in vertical layers so step two is whole nasal cavity packed lightly in layering from before backwards and back to for forwards so this is the packing in vertical direction and packing in horizontal direction so here two types of packing vertical and horizontal one on both cavities may need to be packed pack can be removed after 24 hours if bleeding stopped sometimes kept for two three days in that case systemic antibiotics should be given to prevent sinus infection and toxic shock syndrome Cauterization may be done useful in anterior uh, epistaxis when bleeding point is located. The area is first topically anesthetized and bleeding point cauterized. A bed of silver nitrate or coagulated with electrocautery. Complications are septal perforation. Complications are rhinosinusitis, toxic shock syndrome, estrachian tube dysfunction, scarring or nasal alas, scarring of nasal. So, what are the four complications of epistaxis? Rhinosinusitis, toxic shock syndrome, estrachian tube dysfunction, scarring. RTES, RTES. Okay. So, posterior nasal packing done in posterior epistaxis procedure. A post nasal pack first prepared by tying three silic ties to a piece of gauze rolled into the shape of a cone. Here you can see the roll of a cone. Ends of the silic threads are tied to it and catheter uh, draw, withdrawn from the nose. Pack um, which follows the silic thread is now guided into the nasopharynx and uh, index with the index finger. Anterior uh, nasal cavity is now packed with silic threads tied over a dental roll. The third silic uh, thread is cut short and allowed to. Uh, being the oropharynx and help us in easy removal of the pack. Patient requiring post nasal pack should allow hospitalization. Technique of post nasal pack. So we have inserted the catheter through the nares and removed through the mouth and tied this uh, knot, this dental roll. It has three threads, you can see. It has uh, three, uh, three rolls. And now we can see that uh, we can have this uh, this <clears throat> we can have this. So we have this is the dental roll. It has one thread. This relies in the oropharynx. Now two threads are tied to this and removed through the nasal cavity. One from one side, another from another side. Now we have uh, inserted this dental roll into the nasopharynx and remove the threads one on each side of the septum and tied them alternative method is a foley's catheter size 10 to 12 uh, f, f can also be used after insertion balloon is inflated with 5 to 10 ml of air tube pulled forward so that cona is blocked and then an anterior nasal pack is kept in the usual manner umbilical clamp can be used to prevent anterior displacement of foley's 
now a nasal balloon uh, also available nasal balloon is also available how to how two bulb is one of the post uh, nasal and another of uh, nasal cavity uh, can be two two bulbs can be used now nasal balloons are available so we have this is the Foley's catheter how we have inserted it through the nose and then it has gone in a zigzag way and the terminal end the subterminal end has inflated we have put some air uh, we don't usually put water we put air and we inflate it we why do we don't put uh, air because it may rupture and get aspirated in a very rare conditions some very rare cases and sometimes if we don't are not able to deplete the cup then we have to puncture it and in that case the aspiration may occur so we <coughs> inject it with air so here post nasal packing has been done now epistaxis balloon uh, posterior epistaxis posterior balloon is inflated with 10 ml and anterior balloon with 30 ml of catheter provides nasal airway now complications of posterior nasal packing are rhinosinusitis toxic shock syndrome et disfection scarring of nasal ala dysphagia and hypoventilation so these four were uh, of same as the anterior epistaxis but dysphagia and hypoventilation may be uh, complications of the posterior nasal packing endoscopic cauterization may be done using topical uh, general anesthesia bleeding point localized with a rigid endoscope it is then cauterized with malleable unipolar suction cautery or a bipolar cautery the procedure is effective with less morbidity and decreased hospital stay the procedure has a limitation when profuse bleeding does not permit localization of the bleeding point now we have chronic treatment is electrocautery or endoscopic cauterization and arterial ligation or embolization has been used in refractory posterior epistaxis.